Good evening. evening. Welcome to St. John this evening. It is uh, our observance of St. Michael and all angels. That festival actually falls on Friday, um, but we're not to the point where I can just say, come on Friday and everybody will know to come. (laughs) So we'll recognize it this evening. Uh, Welcome to our guests. We have uh, Neil Winters here uh, from Alaska, from Anchorage, right? Yeah, and Judy, or yep, Judy, um, her, his friend is with her, and also Dominic, who's not from Alaska, actually, just from random, so <laughs> not too far. Welcome as well. Our order of service this evening will follow divine service setting three, which is on page 184, and then especially for our guests, anything that's, that, it, that changes week to week or service to service is going to be either printed or indicated on the service folder, but I'll give you some prompts as we go along. Um, you'll notice that we had an uh, organist tonight. Uh, that's Abigail. Some of you weren't, didn't meet Abigail on Sunday, which was her first Sunday. She's a student at Concordia, Wisconsin, a uh, fourth-year student, although planning a fifth year, too. So we hope to, re- to keep her for some time here. So we have an organist year-round, which would be, well, magnificent. And because we have an organist and it's a feast day, I thought it would be nice if we sang a few more hymns than we usually do. Uh, as I was telling Abigail, when, it's, when I'm leading you in singing, it's a little hard to sing too many hymns just because I get worn out. So <laughs> let's sing our opening hymn or hymn of invocation. Uh, you'll recognize the tune, but it's a text for St. Michael and all angels. Christ the Lord of hosts unshaken, hymn 521.
invite you to stand. Again, our service this evening follows Divine Service Setting 3, page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our intro, it's printed on the insert. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, Mercy upon us, Christ, Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
We sing the Kyrie. upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Feast of St. Michael and all angels is from Daniel chapters 10 and 12. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of our chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days for the vision is for days yet to come. 
At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Turn to our psalm, this evening Psalm 91 at the front of your hymnal. And again, we'll sing it responsibly. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes, and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him 
and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Epistles from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 12. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels, fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, by the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives, even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we could spend a good deal of time, maybe uh, many weeks or months, studying what you might call angelography, no, angelology, there we go, um, or the spiritual realm. But if we were going to do it just as a Bible study, it actually wouldn't take too terribly long. Most of what we think we know about angels and demons, about spiritual warfare, isn't actually drawn from God's holy word. Um, but is coming from extra-biblical sources. Even the names, we know Michael as one of the archangels, but the other archangels like Gabriel and Raphael and uh, the other uh, mutant ninja turtle, I can't remember his name. (laughs) Anyway, uh, we know those names not actually from the Bible. Those come from extra-biblical writings. Only Michael is the one archangel named in the scriptures. And as far as what the angels do and what they're given for, and even that great catastrophe where Satan and his angels were cast out of heaven, is only referred to in these, well, Daniel and in Revelation. So we just have to take uh, the prophet and the revelator at their word as to what happened there. Except for Jesus confirms that it did indeed happen. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You might uh, not know, but the grammar there is actually a little different than how it was translated. I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. It's the imperfect tense in Greek. You don't need to know the Greek word, but simply that I was watching, meaning it happened and it keeps happening. It's still happening. And that's really important because what Jesus is saying is not as if Satan was defeated a long time ago and has no long ongoing uh, warfare happening. No. He fell from heaven, and he continued to fall, and he is still yet falling until the last day when he finally consigned to the place prepared for the devil and his angels. That would be hell or Hades. So he said, I was watching Satan fall like lightning. That's what he said to his disciples, those 72, when they returned to him. They went out two by two, if you remember, and one of the things that they apparently were given to do was to command the demons in the Lord's name. And they seemed quite surprised by this. But, of course, they went with the Lord's name. And with his name comes authority. And with authority, of course, is whatever belongs to Jesus and his name belonged to them. And so he could certainly say that I had given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. You might even add dragons, or as they say around here, dragons. It's a strange pronunciation to me, but there you are. Dragons, right? The dragon, the ancient serpent, a serpent with wings, of course. The one who, well, God had actually promised to Adam and Eve, in particular to Eve, that her offspring would crush the serpent's head. So all through the scriptures, you'll hear serpents, dragons, of course, in the New Testament, but then also snakes um, and scorpions listed as demonic creatures or icons of the demonic host. Of course, if you've ever been around serpents and scorpions, you might have thought the same. Those are little demon-possessed animals. But again, they're icons. And so then when he says, I give you authority to trample on them, just as Jesus can trample on Satan's head, so he gives then to his apostles later, who will be sent in his name, the authority to do the same. That is to wage the same warfare that Jesus won by his suffering and death, to continue the, if you like, mop-up battle, in the days to come. But then he also warns them to not rejoice in this, that they have great power over spirits, not to become proud and boastful in their abilities, but rather to rejoice that they have been named as God's own child. It is indeed the baptized who, who have Jesus' name placed on their forehead and their heart, having been marked as one redeemed by Christ the crucified, who continue to have this authority over the demonic. That is, over the deceiver, the devil, the diabolos, 
or for the first time in Luke's gospel in our reading today, Satan, Satanos, a deceiver, one who misleads, who leads astray, and leads astray not with bad ideas necessarily, but with false words, false words. So you remember that Satan himself attempted to tempt Jesus in the wilderness three times, set three temptations before him for power and for uh, great kingdoms and, of course, uh, with wealth, with bread. So he was tempted and Jesus resisted. One of those temptations we actually sang about today was the psalm, Psalm 91. He will command his angels concerning you, lest you strike your foot against the stone, if you remember that. That was a promise made to Jesus, but it was a promise that was foretelling, of course, his death and resurrection. It, didn't, it doesn't give Jesus license to simply tempt the Father to jump off of the uh, pinnacle of the temple as Satan tempted him. And so for us, too. God promises to us that we have what we call guardian angels, angels that watch over us, lest we strike our foot against the stone, lest we fall into temptation, lest we, well, abandon the faith. His angels are watch over us, and we pray um, to God that he would continue to bless us with these angels morning and, and night with Luther's morning and evening prayer, that your holy angel watch over me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Luther isn't inventing anything there. He's just, again, referring to what the Psalms have already taught us, that God sends his angels with charge over us. So the key here is that he was watching Satan fall, which means that Satan fell from heaven, of course. Satan will be crushed under Jesus' feet with the cross. But the final defeat is yet to come. And in the meantime, as we hear St. Peter describe, Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Seeking to devour you, namely, not your flesh, but your, your faith, your faith in Jesus. But if we take Jesus at his word today, then you are not left powerless. You have been given great authority. These serpents and scorpions, the demonic host, even Satan himself, has no power over you and will by no means hurt you. As we sang on Sunday in our closing hymn, I am baptized into Christ. Get behind me, Satan, you might say. So he fell like from the sky, just like lightning during that amazing assault, the assault of the 72. And Jesus is saying that he perceived the destruction of every strength and cunning of Satan so that he would be able to do nothing to those who believed in him. But on the contrary, every strength would be theirs given to those who believe. That's what he means when he says, I've given you authority. But two more times in just the next two chapters of Luke's gospel, so we heard from Luke 10 tonight, in Luke 11, Jesus casts out a demon who had caused the man to be mute. And when he went out, of course, the mute man spoke and the crowds marveled. But then some said that he cast, it, cast out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. There we learn a little bit more about this unseen realm of angels and demons. Now we have not the prince of the angels, Michael, but the prince of the, of the demons, Beelzebub, the lord of the flies. And in that point, Jesus points out that there is no way that he could be casting out demons if he was a demon himself, because that would be a kingdom divided against itself, and it would fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? But you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub, he reminds them. If I did that, then how do your sons cast them out? Would they too be demons, he says? I cast out demons by the finger of God, and that means the kingdom of God has come among you. And the kingdom of God continues to come among us by his word and spirit. Yes, angel hosts come alongside us, these unseen creatures of God, created for that express purpose, to guard and to protect us, to guide us in the word, to lead us to Jesus and keep us with him. And then again, one more chapter later, now, or two chapters later, I should say, in Luke 13, he was teaching in the synagogues on a Sabbath, and there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, a spirit or, if you prefer, a demon. And she was bent over and could in no way raise her up. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said, Woman, 
you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Of course, this was on a Sabbath, so then they're offended that Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath. And the Lord answered them and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, and here's the key, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things he did. So just in a few chapters, we have most of what Jesus actually says, says about Satan and his host, apart from that written by St. John, and also then by the apostles. You'll note one other detail that I think is important for us to recognize, and that in all three accounts of Jesus and or the healing, or the, I should say the expulsion of a demon, there is a healing. And you'll see this throughout the scripture, that Satan's attack on us isn't simply spiritual, giving us false words, but it's often physical. Of course, the prototypical story for that is the book of Job, where God actually allows Satan to torment Job in his body to demonstrate that faith does not come through earthly strength or through physical health. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. It seems to be a tragic story, but of course, as Luther reminds us, in a mighty fortress, take they our goods, fame, child, and wife, though these all be gone, our vic the victory has been won, the kingdom ours remaineth. They can take everything from us, but if we have Christ, if we have his word, then we are safe and secure. So, that's some of what we can learn about the demons but if, and the angels, but of course, the key then is to remember that, yes, there is a spiritual battle at war in this world. This world is not neutral ground. The church isn't any more protected than the others, except for that we have the word of God. And so for the same for you, to be safe and secure as you go about your daily life in this sinful world where Satan prowls around and his hosts are seeking to overthrow your faith is to remain in his word, a word spoken to you by angels, angel messengers, that would be your pastor, but also angels, spiritual beings that protect you and guide you each day, that keep you uh, from evil, keep you from harm. Pray that the Lord send you these angels and keep these angels nearby so that you would remain in the faith, that you would withstand all the assaults of the evil foe, that these angels would guard and protect you and be shields to you, just as they were in days of old, so they will remain until the last day, serving us as God, well, gave them to do. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. We stand to sing the offertory. Let us pray. O Lord of hosts, King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, we give thee honor and glory for the providence thou hast extended from the foundation of the world 
over all thy people through thy holy angels, who do always behold thy face, worship thy majesty, and execute thy commandments. Especially do we bless thee that thou didst abundantly manifest their presence throughout the earthly life of our Lord Jesus Christ, calling upon thy flaming messengers to reveal to the holy family thy glorious purposes, to fill the heavens with the songs of peace and goodwill at his birth, to strengthen him in his temptation and passion, and to declare his resurrection and ascension to his disciples. Grant, Heavenly Father, that thou hast appointed them to do thy will and to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. They may be given charge concerning us so that, they may, that we may be delivered from every peril that threatens us. Save us from the assaults of the devil, from pride, vanities, and deceits of this wicked world, and from its love of the flesh, of place, and of power. Protect us against every calamity by storm or fire, war or accident, pestilence or famine, and in all tribulation uphold us by thy mercy. By thy word give us light, we pray, for our earthly pilgrimage, so that we may repent of our sins, continue steadfast in faith, and persevere in every good work, and at the end be granted the crown of life which abides forever. Shield thy church, O God, from the hands of all who hate her. Send forth thine angels speedily to defend all who are persecuted and oppressed for thy name's sake to quench the violence of torture and to turn the edge of the sword. Grant the fullness of thy Holy Spirit to thy people, that they may accomplish with faith, courage, and obedience all that thou hast called them to do. Be merciful unto the multitudes in every nation, and for as much as in thine own time thou wilt re reveal thy Son Jesus from heaven with his mighty angels, to take flaming vengeance on them that have denied thee, blasphemed thy name and rejected thy love in Christ. Grant unto the nations time for the conversion of their hearts and the amendment of their ways. To this end, raise up pastors and missionaries who with boldness and grace shall penetrate the dominions of darkness with thy gospel and bring many sons to glory. May thy countenance, or make thy countenance to shine upon our land. Give us the love of truth and righteousness. Grant thy favor to all who bear authority over us. Prosper all schools and colleges as they bear witness to thee. Bless those who labor with mind and hand in such services as are necessary to us. And let the spirit of thanksgiving and brotherliness prevail everywhere. Direct thy holy angels to minister to all who are in want, trouble, pain, sorrow, disappointment, anxiety, or any other adversity, and comfort them with thy power and grace. This evening, we especially pray with Elaine Bellbloom and, and her family at the death of her sister, Diane Miller. Comfort her according to your word. Grant thy presence, that thy presence may brighten in our homes, that our children may learn thy tender love and holy will, and that our parents may walk in the counsels of thy son. Now unto him in whose name we pray, and who will return on the last day with his angels to gather the elect from the uttermost reaches of the earth. To him be glory in the church and praise forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him your majesty is praised by all the holy angels and celebrated with one accord by the heavens and all the powers therein. The cherubim and seraphim 
sing your heart praise, and with them we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, oh, oh, Holy, oh, oh, Holy, Holy Lord God, us some heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Taught by our Lord in trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh, Christ,
lot of Christ shed for you. A 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 lot of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The 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 body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Christ, strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, life everlasting. The part of this peace.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth for heaven. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 I invite you to remain standing. We'll sing our last hymn, 716, I Walk in Danger All the Way.
so good to have you all here this evening. Thanks uh, to Abigail, who we're learning our, our dance steps. That's what you want to liken it like. What does pastor do? What am I supposed to do? We're still figuring out our dance steps. We'll get, we'll get in sync. Um, and welcome to our visitors. Neil, good to have you here. All the way from Alaska. And Judy, right? And then Dominic as well. Good to have you too. Lord be with you all. Good to see you. <laughs> 